Hi, I am going to read chapter four in Looking for Home. Frogs and Crickets. Dad and Liz put all the dirt back around the rose bush while mom put band-aids on my fingers. Then we all sat down in the living room for a talk. We're renting this apartment, said dad. Do you kids understand what that means? It means we're paying to live here, said Liz very quietly. That's right. It means that this is not really our home. The house in Michigan was ours, but this apartment isn't. The pond, the trees, the geese, the ducks, the plants, the flowers, none of them are ours. They belong to the apartments. We're just paying to use them for a while. I sneaked a peek at Liz. I hoped she wouldn't cry. Liz almost always cries when we get in trouble. Sorry, Dad, she said. She sniffed and looked down at her lap. Sorry, Dad, I added. I think it's nice that you wanted to help Grandma Jan, said Mom. But apartment 73 is on the third floor. You couldn't have planted the rose bush by her door anyway. Why don't you just go pay her a visit tomorrow? We'll make cookies and you can take her some. Liz and I looked at each other. Cookies were nice. But they just weren't the same as a rose bush. Cookies wouldn't remind Grandma Jan of home. Just before bed, I went into Liz's room. She wasn't playing or reading or anything. She was leaning on her window seal, staring out at the dark. Don't feel bad, Liz, I said. At least we didn't get in very much trouble. Liz turned away from her window, all happy and sparkly looking. I have another idea. Micah, she said. What is it? I climbed up on her bed and sat down. I was looking out at the pond in the dark, said Liz. And I thought of another little piece of home that Grandma Jan misses. What? Frogs and crickets. Liz pulled her knees up and start and sat hugging them. Remember how she said she used to hear frogs and crickets at night, but now she can't hear them because of the city noise? Yeah, I remember. Well, we'll catch some frogs and crickets and take them to her. She can keep them in a jar by her bed and hear them at night. Good idea. I bounced up and down on the bed. Let's do it tomorrow. Mom used up the last of the oatmeal making cookies the next day. Can we have that container, that oatmeal container for bug catching? Asked Liz. Oatmeal containers are great for bugs. They don't need to be rinsed out. Their lids are soft and easy to punch holes in, and they're big, so they hold a lot. Sure, said Mom. Why don't you go catch some bugs while I get these cookies in the oven? We didn't tell her why we wanted the bugs, and she didn't ask us. We used to catch bugs all the time in Michigan. No big deal. We filled the container about half full with grass and leaves and sticks. That would make the bugs feel at home. Frogs might need water though. So we sprinkled some pond water over the top of everything. Just a little bit, not enough to soak through. Catching frogs and crickets took longer than we thought it would. 
We took a snack break when the cookies came out of the oven. Then we went at it again. I finally plopped down in the grass near the pond. The sun was high in the sky. We had a couple of crickets, but we still hadn't found any frogs. Maybe the ducks and geese eat them all, said Liz. Maybe that's why we can't find very many. And right then I saw one. A frog! I shouted. It was on a rock by the water. I crouched down and slowly moved closer and closer. The frog didn't move. I stretched my hands out towards it. Slowly, slowly, slowly. And then I pounced. But I didn't just pounce. I lost my balance. The next thing I felt was cold water splashing all over me as I tumbled head first into the pond. I made sure I held onto that frog though. I wasn't going to lose him after all of that.